as i said the microgrid controller itself is is a very uh, unique module it not only uh, provides you with the whole site integration but also it provides you in this day and age where data is everything and you would need all kind of statistics or all kind of information that how has been your site operating how much is the solar power how much is the battery contributing how much you have burned fuel on the diesel so all this data on daily weekly and monthly uh, yield can be can be uh, collected through the hybrid controller and it also tells you like how your uh, whole dynamic spinning reserve works and what exactly is dynamic spinning reserve we will be addressing in in coming slides then uh, how basically we can maximize the overall penetration whether something could be improved or we could basically schedule based upon the load profiling all those we can program on, on our end then we talk about curtailment at, at a given point of time when you have very low load and you have oversized your pv system or solar system you want to protect your system from not uh, backfeeding to the generators or backfeeding to grid until unless you have net metering allowed so there again we talk to these inverters and try to curtail this surplus power at any given point of time so all of that feature is incorporated in our hybrid uh, microgrid controller and on the right hand side we have um, a module called as intelli field bus gateway I, this is basically a communication bridge for us which allows us to talk to different um, uh, inverters or uh, bms systems or battery management systems or or any other uh, modbus or tcp based uh, systems rtu or tcp we can come talk to almost all possible inverters uh, available in the market and uh, curtail them control them and uh, make them work in a more efficient manner with respect to the site requirements now addressing the big elephant in the room which is what exactly is dynamic spinning reserve and uh, how exactly uh, does the pv curtailment thing works so allow me to explain i'll give you a very simple um, example how exactly the overall site would work so let's consider a site which is an off-grid site and you do not have the luxury of uh, grid supply available so maybe it's a remote island and we're talking about three generators here each generator here is 160 kilowatt rated and uh, the, the nominal load or the peak load of this site is around 400 kilowatt and um, and you have invested on, on a site with around 320 kilowatt of solar power plant now in the night when there is no solar power available uh, the load is also quite low and it is around 80 kilowatts so one genset would be enough to run and support uh, the load requirement and as we progress um, in the day uh, early morning um, the load is around 320 kilowatt so that's why we bring in uh, two gensets to support the load and we are trying to take 100 percent power being generated at that point of time from the solar energy source so all of these uh, power sources like two generators plus solar are running in parallel and supporting the overall load requirement now as as the uh, day progresses so basically hold on yeah as the day progresses we will have um, more solar power being generated as, as the PV penetration goes high uh, around mid afternoon. So around 12 o'clock, we have around 220 kilowatt of uh, solar power. Sorry, 240 kilowatt of solar power being produced here, and my load is around uh, 320 kilowatt. The same. So you will see the first thing which you will see is uh, uh, we are still trying to harvest as much power as possible, and we are still running two genset. Um, and now I can even stop one genset and, and uh, take whatever power is available from the solar and one genset is enough to support the grid. But uh, what would happen, as you know, the solar power or any, any renewable energy source is intermittent source of energy. They're not uh, available throughout the day and they're, they're not guaranteed to have a constant power supply. They're intermittent and they can change dynamically. So if there would be a drop or if there would be a certain uh, dip in power production, and if I'm just running one generator here, so what will happen is I would have a blackout and my genset would go overload and it will trip the whole load in, which will compromise my site. So that's why we are running two generators to cover up uh, whatever is the load demand and how much power is solar being produced. So that's your DSR or dynamic spinning reserve coming into play. So that is done by our microgrid controller. 
the other factor here is also to protect my diesel generators which um, not all traditional uh, offerings available in the market do so because you are producing high amount of solar and you always want to harvest highest possible you are in, indirectly pushing the genesets to run under loaded and as you know uh, diesel generators are very very less efficient at lower load capacity so usually a typical diesel generator would be uh, highly fuel efficient around 80 percent of its nominal capacity and if you keep running them around say 10 percent 20 percent of its nominal capacity it you are affecting the maintenance cycle of your generators and they will have a lot of smoke deposit on your exhaust line and you might have a breakdown at some point of time so to overcome that we we have a unique feature here we call it uh, minimum gen power in each of this gen set and this microgrid controller sees that that my gen set is being pushed to under load so it will send a request to the inverter and it will curtail or reduce the pv power output from 240 kilowatt to 220 kilowatt and then we push the nominal of gen set from 40 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt each to to allow it to run to a minimum loading condition and that is easily you can find that information from your uh, genset um, data manufacturers data sheet that they will give you a load profile at how how much fuel you have at different loading conditions so that way we are also protecting the genset from under loading and also reverse powering and we try to harvest again the best possible available solar scenario so that is where the curtailment comes into picture and the dynamic spinning reserve now as we move forward, the overall power management, how it comes into play. Like as I said that the microgrid controller always covers up or always calculates uh, the best possible scenario without compromising your load. So in this scenario, as I told you that solar is a very intermittent source of energy. So from say 220 kilowatt, if there is a cloud cover within few seconds, you will see a drop in your solar power production and it will drop to say suppose 30 or 40 kilowatt. And during that scenario, because we were running two generators and diesel generators are capable to take this impulse loads or dynamic loading immediately and they can ramp up from say 50 to 140 kilowatt or 145 kilowatt without any uh, trouble on their side. So your load really doesn't get affected at all. So without interrupting or without compromising on your load feeding scenario, you can always have dynamic uh, control on your genset and your solar energy. Once the solar is back to normal that means you are back to producing 220 kilowatt and the cloud cover is gone uh, we are back to two gensets with 50 kilowatt with a minimum run power or minimum uh, running capacity which we have set inside the controllers by evening once your solar power starts reducing and you are bringing in more load onto the system say more lighting load or more uh, electronics coming into play so that's when you are basically starting your third generator and uh, supporting the overall um, load requirement and as we go late at night uh, basically we are talking about uh, back to uh, completely on genset so this cycle continues so that's how basically your pv curtailment and dynamic spinning reserve is all taken care of by the microgrid controller and uh, and kind of efficiently operate the the gensets in a manner to minimize the overall diesel consumption and still harvest as much renewable as possible now, um, as you saw that uh, even though when I had a very high amount of solar uh, power being produced, I was still, my dynamic spinning reserve calculation was still quite high and I was forced to run two generators not to compromise on my, um, on, on my load. So to overcome that, we also brought